Hey guys, thanks for coming back. We're gonna continue on with our Titanic website build. So in the last video, we went over our Figma design and how we built the main cartoon sort of landing page for the site. And now I'm gonna show you how I translated that design into Webflow itself. So let's take a look. So you're gonna go into Webflow. I assume you're familiar with it, the basics by now. I will be going through a lot of Webflow things throughout my videos, but it's not gonna be a full step-by-step -step guide. So I expect you to come in with a little bit of knowledge about Webflow. So once you're in your page, you're just gonna go ahead and create a new project. And we're gonna use a blank canvas because we don't need no templates. We start from scratch around here. And that's what we're gonna do for this. So we're gonna make this a Titanic website create project. Okay, now we've got our beautiful empty page here and we're just gonna get started. So nothing more beautiful than a blank canvas for us to work on. Okay, and then just to jump back, so this is our, this is what we're gonna be translating, our Figma design. Well, actually this was the Figma design over here. So if just looking at this you can kind of plan ahead and get an idea of what you want to do, right? So it's always best to start with sections and put some containers in there and make divs for everything because everything is just blocks and squares inside of each other, right? So looking ahead, you can already tell we're going to have our main body that's going to hold everything. We can have one section that contains a two containers, one for the sky, one for the ocean. And everything in the sky is the boat and the button here. And then the ocean is going to have the uh, iceberg nested in as well. Set sail will actually be a button. It doesn't have to be a div for this one. So just, it's nice to map out your kind of thought process before you actually get started with anything. All right, so let's just go back here. The first thing we're going to do, I'm going to get our body. I'm going to add a section here. Let's name this just cartoon container, because this will be our main container where everything lives. I'm going to make the width and height of this 100VH, well this is VW, 100% of the viewport width and always 100% of the viewport height. Perfect. All right, so our cartoon container is now, takes up the whole screen and we can add our sky and our ocean within that by adding uh, I'm going to add a div block here. This will be our sky. And let's make the sky's height 60VH. Great, so now it'll always appear as 60% of the viewboard height. Let's give this guy a nice background color. We have our hex value from before of our sky, which was 60D7F1. Beautiful. And now we can go into our cartoon container again. And we're gonna add another div this time. This is gonna be our ocean. And it's naturally uh, displays block, so it's gonna be right beneath it, which is what we want. This will be ocean. The height of this guy. So the other one was 60 VH, so you always, 100 is the number you're working towards always. So 60 uh, plus 40 VH would be 100. So that will take up the full viewport height. And we're going to change this background color again to our beautiful ocean color, which was 1A587B. Beautiful. So already we got our, our beautiful sky and ocean. Looks like the right proportions. Okay, and we're gonna keep going. So remember when we exported our elements from our Figma design, we were able to export our Titanic ship and we can export the iceberg as well, just as little SVG files or uh, PNG files, sorry. Now we can just import those into our document. So if you click this side here, it's where you can import all of your assets to a project, images, photos, videos, um, Lottie animations, which is something we're gonna work with later. So I'm just gonna upload some files from my computer. I'm gonna to go to my desktop. I've got these two guys right here. Iceberg has two words apparently. 
It's okay, I'm gonna do that. So now I've got both the images we're gonna be working with. And again, transparent backgrounds, how amazing, right? So if we go back into our, let's start with the iceberg. So we got our ocean here. I'm gonna click the plus. I'm going to click image. And it's gonna ask me which image I want to add inside this diff block. And I'm going to choose the iceberg. And look at that, there's our beautiful iceberg we made in Figma. Already designed, transparent, so it blends right into the document flow. But we wanna center this, of course, right? So if we click on the ocean here, we can change the display property. We're gonna make this flex. Guys, Flexbox is honestly the most important tool to learn. If you learn anything in Webflow or design or coding, Flexbox will save your life in so many situations. Basically, it's the way you're affecting the containers itself. So it'll push the contents of that container to the left, to the right, to the center. Mostly you're trying to center things. So that's, in this case, this is what we're gonna be doing. So I've got the, here we go. So I've displayed flex. I'm going to align the item to the top of the container, which is our ocean div block, right? And it justifies it into the center. I could put it on the left, I could put it on the right, I could put it, align the baseline, but of course we want it to sit at the top of the ocean. So it's going to be align top and center. Look at that. There she is. Beautiful. Next thing, we're going to do something similar to the sky portion, because that's going to be our, uh, where our ship will sit, the Titanic itself. So in our sky, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit plus, image, choose image. I'm going to click the beautiful Titanic. And then for our sky, we're going to do the opposite. So it's going to be the flex box again. And it's enormous. Oh yeah, let's set some dimensions on these. <laughs> Unless this looks good to you, because if you want the Titanic to be massive, great. Maybe it would have survived if it was this big. Too soon? Is it always too soon? Ugh. Okay, so let's change this. Let's give our uh, boat a width of 400 pixels, I think. Just to scale it down a bit. Oops, and height will be... Let's see, this is not working. First we gotta make this flex vertical. There we go. Center baseline. There she is, that's better. All right, so I went back the sky. We're gonna, instead of horizontally, instead of things filling the container side by side, we're gonna stack them on top of each other. So that's why I did vertical. I'm gonna line it in the center. And instead of justify it on the top, like we did with the iceberg, we want this to sit on the ocean. So we're gonna justify this at the bottom there. And this is our image, it's always, it's like cleaning up in Figma, we always want to name, these are our classes. This is what affects styling normally in uh, CSS and coding world, but for Webflow, it acts similarly, but it's just a good way to keep track of your, your <coughs> sorry, I'm dying. <coughs> Joking. Okay, it's a good way to keep track of your classes and your organization in your panel navigator on the side. Okay, so our Titanic, we gave it some width. Let's give our iceberg a little bit of width as well. Let's see what 400 pixels works as well. That looks good. Now they're kind of equal size. Awesome. Guys, look at this. A few minutes, we already are achieving a similar design to this. This boat looks a little different, obviously, because it's this is a different one that I had made in a day prior. But this is what we got going. Okay, next thing we're gonna tackle is our button. So we're gonna grab a button element here. So let's make sure we're in our sky because that's gonna live in our sky div. We're gonna hit plus, we're gonna do a button. And this is why we have our vertical uh, styling on our, our sky, our flex vertical. So we're just gonna move this above Titanic. So right now our sky is flex vertical, but if we had it on horizontal like before, it pushes everything uh, in line side by side like that. So we wanna make sure it's vertical so they can stack. And then our button will live above Titanic. And let's see, we can also, so let's just take our button. We obviously want some breathing room beneath it. So let's give it some uh, margin on the bottom here. Let's just make this 160. That looks good, just enough so it can float above. And let's change the background color of this. Let's make that same blue color. And I'll show you a nice little trick so you can save your colors in Webflow as well, which will, oops, that's not right. 1A58, 28s, nope, there we go. I'm gonna, if you click this plus here, it creates a swatch for that color, so then you can quickly reference it 
in the future. I'm just going to call this ocean. Now that'll always be saved there for us. Great. And I'm going to change the button text of this to set sail, that nice action verb we had later that references the movie. I'm going to change, let's see, if I go to the body, which is the root element of everything in our document, I can change the text and the font styling, and that'll kind of trickle down to the other elements. So if you edit things in the body, it'll edit everything. Just be aware. It's good to start this way so you can kind of set the tone for everything you want to use later on. So I can do whatever I want for this. Um, but if I, so the font we had before was bad script. That was that nice kind of script we used. That doesn't come with Webflow uh, already. We just have to add that in. So if we go to our project settings, this works for any font you guys too. It's really easy. Just go to fonts just to save some space and memory. It doesn't upload hundreds and hundreds of fonts until you choose which one you actually would want. So I'm just gonna click B, bad script, there he is. Add font, great, added bad script, regular. And we can go back to our designer, it loads it up here. And now when we click on our body again, I can change the base font for everything to bad script. There it is, beautiful. And I'm gonna increase the font size. I can do that at the root level as well. Maybe it's 24, maybe 30. Sure, but now let's change the padding of this button as well. Let's do, okay, hold down shift, I can affect the padding of all sides of it, as you see, or you can hold down alt, and it just does the top and bottom, or left and right, depending on where you are. But I think we wanna give it, let's see, Maybe 16, maybe 20, maybe a little more. Should we do 20 all around? And then we'll change the radius. Maybe that'll look better. Make the radius five, border radius, curvature around the edges of our button. There we go. And there you have it, guys. That's so simple. Look, we already translated our Figma design into our Webflow starting page here. And it was only just a few containers and elements. Look at this. So we've got our one main section. Sections, sections are important for um, screen readers and for SEO and just for things to know how your document flows. So a section is just a good way to kind of indicate chunks of different content. So for this, I think it makes sense to just have the whole page be one content because it's just the container for this website. And then we're going to have our two divs beneath it to hold our sky. The sky contained our button and our Titanic. Both were displayed flex. This one vertical, this one regularly. So Ocean has our iceberg down there. And that's it for this page. Coming next, I will do some animations and simple effects just to kind of bring this page to life and show you some other options. So stick around.